somebody. I don't know, I've been stuck in a dome for 10 years. I swear if I see another one of these memes again. But we need the memes. The world needs them. Hello fellow Kaiju fans, it is I, Godzilla Productions TV, and today I'm going to be giving my spoiler-free review of Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, before we start, I just kind of want to give my thoughts on the other MonsterVerse movies just to compare. Godzilla 2014 was kind of meh for me, you know, eh. But the monster stuff I really liked, except for some cutaways. As for Kong Skull Island, it was a definite improvement, still not necessarily my favorite. King of the Monsters, I love King of the Monsters, you know. Whether or not it's really a good movie, I still really enjoy it. Now, as for Godzilla vs. Kong, I love it. It's it's truly a fantastic movie. I, I really, I really do love it. Though, there are a few things that I kind of wish were done differently with the movie. Which I'll get into after kind of a quick summary of kind of what the movie's about. So the movie's basically about moving Kong from Skull Island to a new home in the Hollow Earth while trying to avoid Godzilla. But as you could probably guess, there's no avoiding Godzilla. As for characters, the movie's basically broken up into two different groups of people. Team Kong and Team Godzilla. Team Kong is made up of a Hollow Earth scientist, someone from Monarch, and a little girl who's actually deaf. You know, she speaks through sign language, and she can actually talk to Kong with it, and he understands. And I think that's a very good element of the movie, more on that later. And Team Godzilla is made up of Madison from the last movie, one of her friends named Josh, and a conspiracy theorist who works at Apex and kind of leaks some stuff from there, named Burton. And now to go a little more in-depth about what I think about the movie. It's a very fast-paced movie, and I think that definitely plays highly to its advantage, but it also kind of negatively affects it. And I'm gonna get those negatives out of the way now, just so I can go all out and gush about it later. So, the first thing is, would be something I didn't mention before, is the two main people from Apex. Walter Simmons and Ren Serizawa. Walter Simmons, he's fine. He's very much so a shell of a character, just a villain and that's all he is. And that's fine, you know, it's, it's fine for this movie, uh, he serves his purpose well enough. Except for Ren Kurosawa. Now, his character would completely be fine, you know, with the same situation as Walter, except for the fact that, uh, Serizawa's in his name, you know, and he's the son, apparently, of Dr. Ishiro Serizawa from 2014 and King of the Monsters. So why would he be a villain, and why do we not know? Very much so a waste of the character, we know literally nothing about him, and again, it would have been perfectly fine if Sarah's, if he wasn't a Sarazawa. But since he is a Sarazawa, we kind of needed to know a little more about him, and we didn't. And I definitely think that uh, just that little detail, knowing why he's bad now, would have been really nice. Uh, and really made this movie almost flawless, in my opinion. Uh, the other issues that I have is that the movie never says that it takes place in 2024. Yeah, it takes place, you know, ever so slightly in the future, so you'll see some futuristic tech in there, which kind of would come out of nowhere considering, you know, they never tell you that it takes place in 2024, five years after King of the Monsters, and it would have been... <laughs> Really nice if they had made that clear. And then one last little thing is that at the beginning they say all the Titans are defeated. You know, the ones from King of the Monsters. Yet, yeah, that's not true, as seen from uh, this list of Bernie's podcasts. You know, you can see that they're really dormant, and that Godzilla had sent out a dormancy call to make them kind of go back into hibernation. And it would have been nice of us to know that and not think that they're defeated as we were led on in the opening which I think was kind of odd. And that's really my only issues with the movie. Other than that, I think it's really do think it's really, really good. All right, now what do I think of the plot of the movie? I think the plot is probably the best route they could have gone with it. It makes total sense in the context of the monster version. It's kind of a very logical thing to happen. And also for anyone who hasn't seen any of the other MonsterVerse movies, in seeing it as a standalone film, it still works perfectly fine. Also, of course, we do end up going into the Hollow Earth for a large portion of the movie, 
and it sets up the lore of the MonsterVerse very well too, as well as very efficiently kind of getting people who haven't seen the other movies a little more interested and invested into the universe. And it's nothing too confusing to the point where they wouldn't really understand what is going on. Now as for the human stuff in the movie, I briefly mentioned some of them earlier, uh, but I'm going to talk about them a little more now. Don't really have much to say about most of the characters in the movie, except for two standouts. That being Bernie the Conspiracy Podcast Guy and Gia the Little Girl Who Can Talk to Kong. Bernie and I just found a genuinely funny character in the movie. Seeing him find out all his conspiracies were pretty much true was pretty good. He was also acted very well. The actor playing him generally did a very good job at selling the character. Not much to say about him, and I kind of saw him as a bit of a standout. As for Gia, she was genuinely a really good character. Her being able to talk to Kong led for some really good heart in the movie. The actress portraying her also did a really good job at selling her emotions, and she was Definitely a good step in the right direction for having good human characters in these movies. And that's really all I have to say about the characters. And now on to the good good. The monster side about Godzilla, Kong, and... <coughs> the other titans in the Hollow Earth. Godzilla and Kong are undoubtedly the best parts of this movie. The fights between the two are probably some of the best action in really any Godzilla movie. There's hardly any cutaways unless it's absolutely necessary. Now something about Kong though that I found kind of interesting in how he was portrayed, which led to something kind of surprising happening. Whenever Godzilla was beating Kong, I kind of found myself feeling bad for him. You know, as much as I am Team Godzilla, you know, I really didn't want Kong to get hurt because he emoted like a human a lot. And not only that, he talked to Gia and really felt like Kong was another character. He almost acted like human a little too much, but also, you know, really added to the character of him. Now, Godzilla. Godzilla was just so awesome in this movie. He was brought back to his roots as kind of the villain of the movie. Seeing some good destruction in this movie was a nice change of pace, and really the ominous feeling he gave at the beginning of the Tasman Sea fight was awesome, you know. Him in the beginning of the movie attacking Pensacola, Florida was great. And him also showing up in Hong Kong was really awesome, you know. There was lots of little bits of damage, you know, that we really haven't gotten to see in any other Godzilla movie that were actually pretty cool to see. He also used his atomic breath, I think, the most he is, has in any Godzilla movie ever. And it honestly kind of feels like the amount of times he used his atomic breath was more than all the times he used it in the Showa era combined. It was, <laughs> it was crazy, you know, everywhere he went, atomic breath coming out at it every second, which I, I'm not complaining, I loved it, you know, I, I, I love some good Godzilla atomic breath, and there were some really good moments with it in this movie, it was never really wasted at all, I, I loved it, I, lo I love the way Godzilla was portrayed in this movie, heard somewhere that he wasn't allowed to emote, apparently, which he still did, you know, there was a scene with him laughing. <laughs> Just overall, I think Godzilla is portrayed super, super well in this movie. Maybe the best of the monster works. I don't know. I, I, I just, I just really liked Godzilla in this movie. Also, as for the creatures of the Hollow Earth, the war bats, I absolutely love the war bats. You know, they've got kind of unique designs, and they were very cool, even if it felt like they weren't really on screen that often. There was also some little critters we saw sprinkled around there, including this really funny fat lizard. That's a funny fat lizard. I like that funny fat lizard. And there is also one thing at the end that you probably already know about, but I'm not going to talk about it in here just in case. That I really think was portrayed better here than he was in basically all of his appearances, and I really liked it. I'll go pretty in depth about him in my spoiler review. Now, there's only one thing left that I want to talk about Godzilla vs. Kong, and that is the soundtrack. And I've heard the soundtrack is pretty divided between people, you know. There's either groups of people who really love it, and people who just really don't like it. And, you know, I'm kind of leaning towards really liking it. I really enjoy a lot of the soundtrack. Even if it doesn't feel like it was utilized well in the movie, a lot of the parts that I really liked listening to in the soundtrack, you could hardly hear in the movie. Though, I do think there were still parts in the movie where the soundtrack was kind of utilized well. 
Now in the end, this isn't all my thoughts on Godzilla Lovers Kong. I'm definitely be going in a lot more depth in my spoiler review, which will probably be coming out in like a week maybe? I don't know, but I, I don't know when it's coming out. I'm definitely going to be going a lot more in depth than that. As for now, I'm going to give Godzilla vs. Kong a 9 out of 10. I, I really love the movie. I thought the plot was great, characters were pretty darn good, action was amazing, uh, pacing was pretty good, you know, it was very fast paced. It's kind of interesting because my first viewing the movie, I loved it. My second viewing the movie, guys, thought it was pretty good. Third viewing, I was I, I liked it a little less, but it definitely, I saw it in theaters again for the fourth time yesterday, and that's when it really clicked for me how much I loved the movie. It, it was just I watched it with friends, and something felt different about it. It just felt it just felt so much more fun, and how it really worked with the fast pacing. And I genuinely think the movie deserves a 9 out of 10. I, I really loved it. Except for the little issues it has, I genuinely think, you know, the fast pacing worked very well to its advantage. The action was awesome. You know, it's, it is a really good movie. I have been Godzilla Productions TV, really enjoying Godzilla vs. Kong, and I am signing off. I'll see you guys later. When is later? Um, that's actually a good question. Uh, you know, I've taken a little break, you know, I said I wouldn't do that at the beginning of the year. I said I'd try to upload a video every week. And I said if I ever missed a week, I would make up for it. And I am definitely making up for it. I got a little too ambitious on a project that I wanted to get to by a certain deadline. And I kind of missed the deadline. So, I'm just going to delay that project and work on some more stuff for you guys right now. That's more in the now. Uh, hopefully that pleased you guys. Uh, so, yeah. See you then.